Well on guys, it's your boy Jack, AKA the Balding Reefer, coming at you with today's video, which is the 80,000 liter pond build. So let's go. Okay, so for those of you new to the channel, hello, my name is Jack. I am indeed the Balding Reefer. I specialize in tropical, cold water, pond and marine fish. This is the 80,000 litre pond build that we desilted on a previous video, link above for that one. Uh, and if you're returning people, welcome back. Um, today is gonna be epic. Before I spin you around and show you what I can see, uh, let me show you the, the beautiful view first. Nice overcast day. It's pleasantly warm though. Nice bit of uh, fog coming in off the hillsides, which is super cool. But let's show you what you've all come to see. It is full to the brim. And there's so much going on in today's video. We've got some retrofit bottom drains coming next week that are going to be going on the bottom of here just to get the last few remnants of silt at the bottom of the pond. We've got the All Pond Solutions skimmer set up, which we're going to be setting that up today. We've got the Oasis filter, which we've just put a new hose tail on. Benny Boy's got the nets and the hose that we're going to be putting on as well. So we're going to be plumbing in the All Pond Solutions skimmer on the DIY backy shower just over the top here um, of the overflow. And we're also potentially today going to be plumbing in the trickle in, trickle out system from a uh, spring. So we've put some goldfish up in there uh, in the trough up here the other day. Let me just see if we can uh, see any at the moment. We did come up this morning and see a few in there. We, we put four in, I think it was. So this here is the trickling trickle out system. So it trickles in from there, comes down here, and at the moment just runs into a manhole where the divot is in the grass. But we're going to feed up some UPVC tubing, put a funnel system in, in place on the top. So as it trickles out over the side here, it's then going to act as a trickle-in, trickle-out system. But, let's see if we can find some goldies, eh? Normally, they tend to hide out down here. We did see them this morning. They were uh, trying to eat the pond skims that were in here. There's one. See him just down there? These guys are doing tremendously well. The reason why we actually put them in there was just to test the water parameters. Couldn't be absolutely fine on a, on a test kit, don't get me wrong, but obviously we wanted to sort of put the, the goldfish in there as a little bit of a dummy run, just to make sure they're all doing okay. <clears throat> but in essence, on the All Pond Solution skimmer, this is a 15,000 litre per hour pump. Sorry, 12,000 litre per hour pump has been sat over in the background going, 12, it's 12. 12,000 litre per hour pump. We've got 10 metres of the hose tail stuff. Obviously not there, it's in the back of Ben's car. Um, but the pump's going to sit here on these bricks, so it's slightly elevated. And then we're going to feed the hose round the back, over the top, into the uh, overflow backy shower. But let me snap back to you in a second when we've got this bad boy out. Okay, so the DIY backy shower is now being installed over the top of the overflow. So this is the main drain that you would have seen on the previous video. <coughs> All we've got is we've got this drainage tubing. We've cut it down to six, six inches. In. Yeah, six inches. Uh, so we've literally just left, left that rest in the top. What happens now is obviously Ben will put the, the next box on. As you can see, it gives us the clearance through the holes. We're going to fill this top bit now full of mats and filter floss just to help polish the water and take out any small debris that's in there. Obviously the silt on the bottom, that's slowly but surely getting sucked through the two OAS filters which are down here. We are also going to be doing a uh, sponge change on those today, on one of them. But like I say, by the time we get the, um, the retrofit bottom drains coming off the back of these OAS filters, it'll suck all of that debris into those filters, no problem at all. So what we need to do now is connect the pump up to the All Pond Solution skimmer and then get the 10 meters of uh, flexi hose through the water and connected up onto here. So like a pair of plums, well, I say a pair, me being the plum, we put this in the pond last week and then we're struggling like Billy-o. Oh, when is it to get it out? However, it's 
It's worked an absolute dream. So now we can set this bad boy back up and we're good to go. So the all pond solution skimmer, as it says on the side here, uh, flow rate is between 8,000 and 16,000 litres per hour. Obviously we've got a 12,000 litre per hour pump, smack bang in the middle of where we need to be. Suitable for a pond over 40 square metres, so it'll be more than do this, which is pretty cool. So Benny Boy's just in the process now of uh, ramming that on there. Oh, water. So it'd help if you could see. I'm shining the camera at the floor. Let me put you in a wide angle, there you go. I might have to get some boiling water. Yep, let's get the boiling water on the go. Right, we've got a dirty cup of hot water. Ben's breaking the gaff. Yep. I mean, yeah, bring the bring the mug to the hose flower. You know what I mean? You make it easier, wouldn't it? As opposed to bringing the hose to the mug. So all this is going to do is just make the plastic molecules expand. Here's a science lesson for you all. So as the plastic molecules expand, it means the hose is going to expand, which in turn, we can get a 38 mil hose over a 38 mil hose tail. And yes, people, we have cut the hose tail down. Look at that, fits like a glove, he says. Here's where he slips and cracks himself straight in the knackers. Look at that. Done that before, haven't you, Flower? Yeah. There we go. Right. We have got different flexios. It holds a lot straighter, but it's an awful lot thinner than the All Pond Solutions one. There's 10 metres of that bad boy. How much you pay for that? Uh, I think it's £27. £27 off Flea Bay. So, yeah. Let's uh, get to sliding this puppy back in, shall we? Oh yeah, we need the, we need Ben. Come on, come on. Listen, we're honest on this channel. So this here does stick in. It doesn't go anywhere. However, because there's a plastic cap around the top, we promise we're not putting this on just to give the tape an extra little bit of support because we didn't order an extra hose tail. We promise. But it generally does hold in. But obviously the little metal clips, we've got to offer these fishes some protection. So that's what it's called. And that's what it's been used for. Creative flair. See, no, no, no fish is getting scratched on that other flower. Oh, that's it. I mean, look at the concentration in that face. Look at that. It looks even better upside down, doesn't it? You've got my double chins on there. Oh, yeah. yeah. Double? Awesome. Try three. The yeah. third one's hiding yeah. underneath his little hood here. Look at that. Woohoo! Right, I think, I, I definitely think that's enough tape there, flower. Gotta be sure. We've got it. Well, apparently, we've got to be sure. We need to tape up the other bottom metal one as well. Shall do. If you listen ever so quietly, you can hear that whip crack in the background. I'm surprised none of us have fell in yet. Well, to be fair, that's a lie. I did fall in last week. If you look here, see where the, stri see where the stripes are on the bottom? Straight on my bum. That was my left foot. That one was my right foot. And I ended up pretty much down there. I mean, I think that there might actually be my butt imprint where I landed. <coughs> so now we've taped up, we'll slide this back in. Oh, and by the way, we are actually adding fish into this pond today, so make sure you stick around to the end. I see you, half video watchers out there. The beauty about the All Pond Solutions Pond Skimmer is it will self-level in the water. And what's fun about using a pond skimmer, if you see this little hook on there, you get to play hook a duck every day to get all the gunk out that it catches. And here we have a roach in its natural habitat. Hang on, let me suck on the end. I'll tell you what I could do, because I'm going to be there all day. Two seconds, Benny boy. There we go. Look at that. Look at that. So what we'll do now is we'll push this bad boy back where she belongs, which is around about there in the middle of that. You may be asking why we've put the pond skimmer down here. The reason for that is obviously we've got the fountain there, we've got the DIY overflow there, we're going to get some airstones in here, but as the flow comes round and as the silt comes down off the hill, 
as it comes into the water, we want it to pull from this end because this bit here is like the dead spot, if you like. So let's get this hooked up over there. Right, so we're all uh, hooked up. Now it's just a matter of getting the foams back in. So super fine on the bottom, medium grade in the middle, and then our coarse ones on top. Then we'll finish it off with just a fine layer of filter floss, which is just going to help with polishing the water and removing any floating debris. We have also got the added uh, benefit of potentially being able to add on an additional UV clarifier if we need it. But looking at how clear the water is for the time being, I think the two OIS ones that are on there will be absolutely fine. So I'm not particularly bothered about that just yet. So we'll uh, we'll play it by ear as and when we add fish in. Like I said, this isn't particularly the cleanest, it has already come off, but it's going to be full of beneficial bacteria. We have already added in as well um, last week, which we forgot to get on video, uh, two of the all pond solutions, bio balls as well. So the pond uh, is already cycling, which is good. So now it's just a matter of turning this bad boy on. Okay, so what's going to happen with this now? Ben's just going to plug that in there now. The all pond solution skimmer is going to level itself. There you go. And that's the beauty about using a skimmer like this, is as you'll see now, all this detritus that's on top of the water, the grass cuttings and stuff like that, it's just going to get pulled into here. And already you'll start to see from the middle here, this stuff floating is already going down towards the skimmer basket. We've already got a lot of, uh, a lot of water coming through here. So we've got a lot of water over there now. Obviously, the little bit of cloudiness is fine. I'm not particularly too worried about that. It's just washing through the bits of uh, grit that was already in there. But as it, in turn, comes round and settles down there, it's going to get pulled through those pumps and into the Oasis ones down there. You can already see that it's starting to run through clear now anyway. So, more than happy with that. Next job of the day on uh, the 80,000 litre show pond. You see this hole here? We're going to feed some of the, what's it called? Water piping. Water piping. MDPV, whatever it's MDPV, apparently. <laughs> uh, we're gonna feed some of the water piping up there into the manhole, and then try and feed it as far up to the top as we can possibly get. We've got to nip down B&Q and get a fun lamp way for the top of that grid. Maybe get some post creased as well, just to smooth up the sides, just to give it a bit of an angle down, something like that. Um, the neck of the all pond solution skim at the moment is sitting slightly off. So what we're gonna do now, Ben's just gonna uh, grab a net and just try and literally prod it and poke it to get it to sit level I mean it's working absolutely fine don't get me wrong however being a perfectionist I want it to sit up straight try that mate and like I say this is the, this is the beauty about this I mean already it's starting to pull all of that surface stuff off so yeah super super happy with how that's working Yes, it's not taking debris off the bottom, but don't forget we've got two 12,000 litre pumps there. We're gonna have one sat in the middle, sorry, two 16,000 litre power pumps over here, which we're gonna have a retrofit bottom drain pulling all that in, and we're gonna have another retrofit bottom drain over here in this dead end. So in essence, then we've got full circulation on the pond. This water is naturally gonna start pushing round to, the, to here. This water's pushing round to here. So now we've got a constant flow going round the pond. Obviously we've got to add in air pumps and air stones and stuff like that, yeah. We will, put, we will be putting some filter floss in there today as well. And we're also, in a couple of weeks time, gonna be putting some Mediclay in the top of here, showing you the benefits of that, why it works, how it works, etc. But make sure you stay with me on this one, because next job is this, and then we're gonna be adding in the fish, and we've got some absolute beauties to go in here today. Okay, so to do the trickle in, trickle out overflow system, this pipe runs through to here, and then goes into the pond, however, what Dave tried to do a few years back was actually block the bottoms up in here. So this one comes down from the hillside. This one here takes off into a main drain, so we possibly need to block that. So then the water will come, the, the manor will fill, and then it'll trickle through down here. Because there's no way we can feed the blue tube down, and then up, and then get the water to come out. Then the other option that we've got 
is if we route back with some more of this drainage over up into the corner. So the first call you're going in now, Ben's brought up two big ghosts, a big Beko and an albino sturgeon. Dave's koi are going to be coming out of his uh, pod in a minute. He's been acclimating now for 15, maybe 20 minutes. Ben's just going to add a little bit of uh, Dave's pond water to the bag now because we've temperature acclimated them. We've uh, temperature acclimated them, so we're now just going to do a little bit of water mixing, leave them on for another 10 15 minutes, and I'll show you in a second when we're taking them out of the bag. The first two have been let in. Ben's just drip acclimating this one. Waiting for his pal come out, isn't he? And here's the other one. Yeah. This one's called Jack. And this one's called George. But again, I think George is a Georgina. Sounds a pound. So obviously he's super pink at the moment because he's stressed, but once he comes out of here, once he's been in the water for 15 or 20 minutes, he'll be absolutely fine. And we've got the albino surgeon left to do. Okay, so the first three big ones are in. The big Beko is pink's dropping out of him now, which is good. And obviously the two big ghosties. And if you look just down there in the middle, you can just about make out the sturgeon. But we've got some humongous plans for this pond. So make sure you stick around to the end of this video because we're about to put a load more koi in here uh, that originally came out of here. And then I'll tell you the huge plans that we've got for this pond at the end of the video. Are you ready then? Yeah, you can. Just uh, stand here though, but so the kids aren't in the footage. That's all. Right. 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 That's exactly it, mate. This one's going to be a little bit heavier, so if you grab them. Oh, keep tipping. There you go. The big ones are coming over, say hello. Oh, yeah. They're all coming to the back. Spot off. Away. Oh, look at that.
So as you've seen, the coil are quite a doing the thing. What we're doing at the moment is just installing a temporary electric fence. The reason for that is since the pond's been clear, the heron's been landing early of the morning. And obviously we've just put some absolute stunning koi in here. So what we don't want for the time being, you see the heron to be going at them. So Jace is just currently spooling it round now. We are going to be swapping this out for a proper um, electric heron repellent. It's only going to give it a short jolt, so it's not going to kill the heron or anything like that. It is just a deterrent, don't worry. So yeah, let me snap back to you in a second when it's all up and running. Okay, so the DIY electric fence has now been installed. We're unsure if it's actually working. Touch it, Ben. I don't know, put your hand on it, see what happens. Just put your hand on it. That's dead. That's not on. Okay, so Dave's got his fence line tester on. And if you look at 2000 volts there, you can just see it flicking through. Just to read it. Yeah. So it's definitely on. Now we've just got to convince either Jace or Ben to touch the wire. It is, it? Touch it here. <laughs> this is going to be brilliant. <laughs> it's flashing on between. Ah! Did you actually get ya? If you hold it on, yeah. yeah Didn't want to first touch it. It's not that bad. I'll only touch it once, won't I? Fuck! <laughs> <laughs> Just work, Beat that it? one out! <laughs> <laughs> well, that, that works. You can get some, you know, connect to the mains. <laughs> okay, so there you have it. All the koi are in. I told you there was something special coming at the end of this video. And what that something special is, is there's a load of boulders. Um, that Dave's got that we're actually going to be doing uh, an overflow uh, sort of like river system. Um, we're going to put it over the top of the drain so it comes over and cascades into the pond but we're going to be showing you that on next week's video. We'll show you the boulders moving them up on the big JCBs and stuff which is going to be super super cool. But yeah so just to quickly recap what we've done today. Obviously we've installed the All Pond Solutions Pond Skimmer, showed you guys how to do that. We've installed the electric fence on there as well. We did have a look at the blue tubing that you can see in the background here behind me but what we actually need to do is chase it out because of the way that the manhole sits we're not going to be able to do it because the water's not going to flow uphill so we're going to be doing that on next week's video uh, the pond owner Dave is super super happy with it um, his grandchildren are going to be getting involved as well which is super super cool so obviously make sure you do stick around for this video because we're going to be going through and talking about how we actually plant up a pond properly um, there's it, there is the fishing lake, uh, there's a massive lily pad section on there so we're going to take some cuttings off there and obviously show you guys how to propagate lilies and getting them to survive in a koi pond because I know a lot of you do struggle with that, me included but we've got an ingenious method in regards to how we're going to sort that out but this pond in the summer is going to be absolutely amazing just need to get two bottom drains on here now fish are already starting to follow us around the pond which is really really cool but I just want to show you from this angle before we sign out. Just imagine in the summer, nice barbecue, sun setting behind the back of you, good friends, great company, even better fish, and what a view to end your day to. Absolutely incredible. Make sure you follow me on social media, guys. Make sure you're subscribing, sharing, liking, leaving me a comment um, down below. I know you guys are super keen to see an update on this video. We're going to end it there. It's been a hell of a long day. We've got loads done. We've got loads done in the koi facility as well. So yeah, super, super interested for this summer uh, for koi keeping for you guys. But we'll end it there. So as I always say, stay safe, stay sane. Most importantly, people stay happy. Baldin Reefer, out.